Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here for another episode of Ask Nathan. Thank you for joining me on TFL Now, the very same channel that'll soon have live broadcasts from TFL headquarters and other places, yes. Okay, here we go. Straight into the questions, gotta ask them because, well, you guys are gonna love it. First of all, uh, I decided to have a piece of paper here. Normally I don't work with paper, I try to save trees, but because some of you have asked to have your names mentioned, I decided to, every other question, have your actual question there with your name, obviously not your last name or your address. Um, although that might change in the future. You know, maybe you guys can send me some money and I'm just kidding. Okay, here we go. Hi Nathan, I just took delivery of a new Fusion Sport. I didn't think these things were on the road yet, sort of surprising. And while I'm waiting to get to 1,000 miles on it before I really start driving it hard, uh, I have a question about turbocharging. Uh, do turbochargers uh, retain the same sea level performance when they're on an altitude like up here in Denver? Or do they lose less power than normally or naturally aspirated engines? Uh, this is from Ken. So thank you, Ken. And the answer to that is yes. <laughs> okay. All right, let me explain. When you have forced induction, supercharger, turbocharger, you're helping the engine compensate for the air density up here. As such, you will get back some of the horsepower that you would lose. Every thousand feet, you lose 3% of, uh, above sea level, every thousand feet, you lose 3% of your horsepower. And then as you go up, then you lose more and more and more. So if you're at 10,000 feet, you're losing up to 30% of your horsepower in a naturally aspirated vehicle. Turbocharging mitigates a lot of this, but you still lose a bit. Same with supercharging. There is a little bit of loss. The only problem is, is we can't quite calculate just off the top of our heads exactly what that loss is. Each car is different. So some superchargers uh, will lose 5%. Some superchargers will only lose like 3%, which is one of the reasons why a lot of World War II aircraft had supercharged engines all over the world because at high altitude they were fairly reliable in terms of how much power they lost. Uh, turbocharged engines on the other hand, well you can have a single turbocharged engine or a dual turbocharged engine and everything changes in terms of the mathematics be between how much you lose in terms of horsepower. So bottom line, your Ford Fusion Sport which has a turbocharged engine, twin turbocharged engine I believe, will perform very similar to what it does at sea level. You will lose a little tiny bit, but not a lot. So I hope that helps. Okay, uh, next question. And a few of you have asked this. Tacoma, Frontier, or Canyon? Um, okay, well, here we go. If you want a diesel, good gas mileage and decent towing, then you go for the Canyon. If you want to have a vehicle that is known for reliability and excellent off-road prowess, then you would go for the Toyota TRD Pro, or even their off-road package is pretty damn good. And if you wanted the, currently, the least expensive of all those vehicles where you got a lot of truck for the money, then you'd go for the Frontier. I'm not going to choose one of them because they all have their pros and cons. I will say this, I used to own, well I currently still do, but it's on sale, uh, a Toyota Tacoma. So I'm a little biased, but I'm not even going to throw that in there because I know how good the Frontier is and I know how good the Canyon or the Colorado is, okay? So that was a simple one. Okay, finally, if you could be driven, this is how the quote came in, if you could be driven in only one car for life, what would it be? You're asking a guy who reviews cars about what he wants to be driven in. So. Okay, real simple, the Bentley Mulsanne. So that's what I would choose. It's an interesting question. I don't understand why you asked me about being driven. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Now, real quickly, I wanted to talk about this vehicle behind me. This is the brand spanking new Lexus LX570. Basically what you're looking at is a very high priced Toyota Land Cruiser. And we had the Land Cruiser, by the way, and we took it off road and it did really well and it has a new transmission. Basically everything it could do, this most likely could do, with one exception. See, um, Lexus decided to put on 21 inch wheels over here, <laughs> and those 21 inch wheels probably are around $1,500 a piece, maybe even more. And so taking it even on our basic off-road trail where rocks are you know, six, seven inches high in some spots means there's a chance that we could scuff these up. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to scuff these things up. So we had a big discussion and we decided that because we took the Toyota Land Cruiser off-road and we managed to really test that vehicle, we were going to take it easy on this one and drive it in the mountains instead, which we did do and it did very well. 
Although, I must say that for its size and weight, it's a little anemic. It needs, frankly, more horsepower. That's probably because of all the stuff it has in there. 6,000 pounds, baby. 6,000 pounds. Oh, and finally, probably one of the quietest SUVs I've ever driven. Very, very quiet inside, but it's a Lexus. So there you go. Thank you again for joining TFL now for Ask Nathan. Guys, just write them down. Send them to me any way you can down below or send it to one of our websites. It'll come to me and I will try to get it out here on the air. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. One of you wanted to know about the upcoming Mazda RX-7 and if Mazda's made any announcements about it. And they certainly have. All right. <clears throat> Yuji Nakamini, who's Mazda's corporate global director, said no. They're not building that vehicle anytime in the near future. Uh, there was the RX Vision project and a whole bunch of other teasers out there and hints about rotary engines and other things. That